Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the circular time shifting property of DFT. So the theorem can be stated as follows. If x of n has a DFT capital X of k, then x of n minus l mod n, that is a circular shifted uh, sequence will have a DFT given by x of k multiplied by e power minus j 2 pi k into l by n. So that is the extra phase term. So let us verify this theorem. So the DFT of the DFT of the circular shifted sequence DFT of x of n minus l mod n. It is by definition equal to summation summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n minus l mod n x of n minus l mod n and then e power minus j 2 pi n k over capital n. Now the main thing we have to worry about is what is the value of this n minus l mod n. n minus l mod n. It is n minus l mod n. It is n minus l mod n has two possible values for n minus l less than 0 that is value between minus n plus 1 n minus uh, to 0 that is uh, value of n minus l is between uh, minus of 1 n minus 1 and 0. So for these negative values the value of n minus l mod n is given by the value of n minus l mod n is given by n minus l plus n. Uh, we can verify this as follows. Here we have here we have minus n and then we have our 0 and then n minus l is somewhere here that is n minus l is a negative value between 0 and n minus l is a negative value between 0 and uh, minus of n minus 1. So the difference between uh, then the value n minus l mod n is basically the gap between n minus l and minus n. So the gap is obviously equal to n minus l plus n. Therefore n minus l mod n is equal to n minus l plus n. And in the case of positive values that is uh, values between 0 and n minus 1 that is when n minus l is positive that is it should be between 0 and n minus 1 in that case in that case the value that is the value n minus l is on the right side of 0 the right side of 0 n minus l is on the positive side of 0 so the gap between that is the n minus l mod n is the gap between n minus l and 0 so in other words n minus l mod n will be the gap between n minus l and its previous multiple and the previous multiple and a multiple of n before n minus l which is nothing but 0. So n minus l mod n is nothing but n minus l. So for negative values it will be n minus l plus n and for positive values it is n minus l. Therefore n minus l mod n is equal to n minus l plus n for n minus l less than 0 and n minus l for n minus l greater than 0. So that is the a result. Now the summation can be rewritten as for, uh, rewritten based on the uh, value of n minus l mod n. So the summation will be uh, summation n equal to 0 to l minus 1 that is n is less than l minus uh, n equal to 0 to l minus 1 that means all these values I will make sure that n minus l mod n or n minus l is actually less than 0 that means we will have this value that means x of n minus l plus n that is mod n minus l mod n is replaced by n minus l plus n and then e power minus j 2 pi e power minus j 2 pi n k by capital n and then the rest of the sum that is n is equal to l to n minus 1 that is n minus l will be positive for these values because n is greater than l uh, at least n is greater than or equal to l so it will be x of n minus l e power minus j 2 pi n k by capital N. So that is the uh, definition. So now we can see that there are two summations. So let us look at the first summation. So the first one is summation n equal to 0 to l minus 1 x of n minus l plus n e power minus j 2 pi n k over capital N. So to simplify this one let us rewrite n minus l plus n there is this term as a new variable m so in that case 
when n is equal to 0 m is equal to n minus l and when n is equal to l minus 1 m is equal to n minus 1 so these are the new limits so the summation the summation can be rewritten as m is equal to n minus l to n minus 1 and then x of m and then uh, n is replaced by m minus n plus l so e power minus j 2 pi m is uh, and that is n is replaced by m minus n plus l and then k or capital n and then uh, of course e power minus j 2 pi into minus n by capital n that part is basically equal to 1 so this one simplifies to summation m equal to n minus l to n minus 1 x of m e power minus j 2 pi m plus l multiplied by k into divided by n so that is the uh, simplified form of first sum now let us look at the second summation that is this summation that is uh, summation l equal n equal to l to n minus 1 x of n minus l e power minus j 2 pi n k by capital n so the second sum summation n is equal to l to n minus 1 x of n minus l e power minus j 2 pi n k by capital n again as usual we write n minus l as a new variable m and then when n is equal to l implies m is equal to 0 and when n is equal to capital n minus 1 m is equal to n minus l minus 1 so those, these are the new uh, limits or uh, limits of the summation so the limits of the summation are m equal to 0 to n minus l minus 1 so and then we have x of m and then we have e power minus j 2 pi and n is replaced by m plus l so um, we have m plus l k divided by n so when we look at these two sums uh, the, the first uh, this one is m equal to 0 to n minus l minus 1 and then x of m and then exponential of e power minus j 2 pi m plus l k by n and this one is summation m equal to n minus l to n minus 1 that is it is basically continuation of this summation from n minus l to n minus 1 x of m and the same terms so we can combine these two as a single summation with the index m equal to 0 to n minus 1 so the final summation the combined summation is m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of m and then e power minus j 2 pi m plus l multiplied by k divided by n so since we are doing summation with respect to m so this term with respect to l can be uh, brought outside the summation so it is e power minus j 2 pi l k by capital n and then we have summation m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of m e power minus j 2 pi m k by n so this summation is basically the definition of dft so therefore therefore our dft of uh, x of n minus l mod n that is dft of x of n minus l mod n is equal to this dft the original dft x of k multiplied by this phase term that is e power minus j 2 pi l k divided by n so that is the circular shift property of dft to summarize in this video we have looked at the circular time shifting property of dft so the theorem can be stated as follows x of n has a dft x of k then the dft of x of n minus l mod n that is a circular shifted uh, sequence e is given by the original dft multiplied by e power minus j 2 pi k l by capital n, a phase shift so to prove this property we start with the definition of the dft of this new sequence and then uh, we identify the values of n minus l mod n for negative values it will be equal to n minus l plus n and for positive values it will be equal to n minus l and then by using these uh, results uh, and we substitute them in the definition and then we find that there are two parts in the summation so the first part or the first summation is from 0 to l minus 1 and the second one is from l to n minus 1 then we consider the summations separately and we simplify the first sum to be a sum starting at n minus l to n and ending at n minus 1 that is m is equal to n minus l to n minus 1 x of m e power minus j 2 pi into m plus l into k by n so that is the first summation and the second summation similarly simplifies to m equal to 0 to n minus l minus 1 
and then x of m e power minus j 2 pi m plus l k by n. So, if you uh, look at these two summations, uh, the components are the, uh, these terms are basically identical, but the indices are also actually uh, in a series, that is they are actually, uh, uh, they actually fit together, that is m is equal to 0 to n minus l minus 1 and these values are actually a sequence. So, the, we can combine the total sum, these two summations. So, next we can combine these two summations into a single sum uh, with index from the, with the index from m equal to 0 to n minus 1 and then the same uh, terms and we can identify this summation, this summation as uh, the definition of DFT of x of m. So, on this part is basically a phase shift. Therefore, the DFT of a circularly shifted sequence is given by the original DFT multiplied by a phase term. It is like a phase shift. Thanks for watching.